Hi there, and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian, and today we're going to look at the operation instructions for this Hyundai HYW 3000P2 petrol pressure washer. So we're going to give you some instructions of the do's and don'ts, how to work it, how to start it, how to stop it, that sort of thing. So we've done all the assembly of the machine, we put engine oil in it, we've put fuel in it. One other thing that we may need to do if we're going to use the detergent is to put detergent in it. Obviously, we have the soap canister here. I'll just pop the lid off, it does fit firmly. So we could put our detergent in here, whether it be traffic film remover, something like that, if we were doing some cleaning. So, detergent goes in there. There we are. So for the detergent to operate, we would need to put the low pressure tip in the lance. Now I've got a white one in here. I haven't started the machine. So this black tip, is the one we use for detergent. It's a lower pressure, it has a much larger hole. When this tip is engaged in the end of the lance, that will then draw fluid from this tank and out into the jet of water. So adding the detergent to the surface you're cleaning. So that would be for the black tip if you were going to use the detergent. You simply pull down the little ferrule, place the tip in, release the ferrule, and that's how to change a tip. Never do that with the engine running or with the lance pulled. So when you shut an engine down, always release the pressure from the lance before changing a tip. That way it avoids accidentally getting a water injection from the end of the lance. So the main part of the controls for the unit are here on the carburetor itself. So this lever here would be the throttle. That would be at idle and that would be at full throttle. That's the normal operating position and starting position. We have the choke here, this top grey lever, and the fuel tap below the black lever. Towards the engine, turns the fuel on. So fuel can now run from the, uh, from the fuel tank down and fill the float bowl of the carburetor. So to start the machine, we'd always turn the fuel on. When we finish the machine, especially uh, using it, especially if you're going to be transporting the machine, I'd always recommend turning the fuel off again. So fuel switched on, ready to roll. So choke off, choke on. For a cold start, and on most starts, we need to turn the choke on. So the choke, fully this way, away from the engine. Once the engine has started, we can push the choke back towards the engine. So both levers back towards the engine would be the normal operating position. Choke this way to start, that way to stop. So again, when we start the engine, the procedure would be choke on, fuel on, full throttle. Before we start it with a recoil, it's important that we bleed the system through with water. We'll go through that next. So as I said, before we start the engine, the pump is water cooled and it will overheat if it runs for any long periods of time with no water in it. So we need to bleed water in through the system so that it doesn't run dry as it were. So we would connect our hose pipe from the mains water and turn on the tap. Water would come to the pump first of all. The next thing we would need to do, without the engine running, as I said, let's just bring this over for you, would be to pull the trigger. Now, water will gradually wake it, work its way through all the hoses and out through the tip in the end of the lance. And you will hear the bubbles and air coming out. Just as a little point while we're at this stage is there's a little safety red tab on this trigger. So that if you leave the lance unattended, it's a, a you know, child safe, that sort of thing. And you can't inadvertently pull the trigger when, uh, when you're doing anything else. So that little red tag is just a little safety lock. And that would be open, close. So the water's on, water's flowing through because we're pulling the trigger. And it, now water is coming out of the end of the lance. This is the point where we can now pull the recoil. On the side of the engine here is the on-off switch. We need to switch it on to allow the engine to start. With, in the off position, it basically grounds out the spark pack, kills the spark to the spark plug and the engine will stop. So a very simple on off switch. So up with this end in the on position. Now, we've got everything set ready to pull the recoil and we've bled water through the system and we could pull this recoil to try and start the engine. One drawback, one thing you need to pay note to is that you may get one pull and then if you're not pulling the trigger on the lance, you will be trying to achieve 
pressure within the outlet line with the recoil only, which is what the engine's supposed to do. So you may find that it'll lock solid. So what you need to do, and this is pretty much the same for all pressure washers, is when you're pulling the recoil, also pull the trigger, and that will allow you to pull the recoil and you're not generating back pressure in the pump, which will stop you pulling the recoil. So that's just an important thing to remember. If it locks out and you think, oh, the engine's seized up, it's because you're trying to achieve the 3000 PSI with a recoil. So always pull the trigger when you're starting the engine. Obviously, once it's started, it's ready for use. Pull the trigger for, um, you know, obviously when you want to use the lance, release it when you want to stop the water flow. So one important thing, don't leave the machine unattended without pulling the trigger. So don't leave it unattended with the engine running. I know that would waste fuel anyway, and you're not likely to do that for more than 30 seconds or so, because the water flow won't be flowing through the pump, keeping it cool, as we described earlier. So if you're not going to be using it for more than a minute, say, switch the engine off and stop it, and then restart it when you need it again. So when you finish with the machine, the stop procedure, we'd keep hold of the lance, we could drop the throttle down to an idle for a few seconds until the engine settles at an idle speed, keeping hold of the lance again, and we'll just switch the engine off. Okay? That would ensure, if we do that procedure, that there's no pressure in the system. If we were to do it the other way, leave the throttle full out and just switch the engine off, we'll still have pressure in this line. And if you forget about that and you go to disconnect any of these connections, we would have a sudden release of high pressure. So if you have forgotten, make sure you pull the trigger to relieve any pressure in the system before attempting to disconnect any of the unions. So having gone through all the controls and correct methods of use, can I just draw your attention back to the user manual? Now there's a lot of health and safety information in this manual, and it is very important. A pressure washer can be a very dangerous tool. We're dealing with very high pressures, and a direct water jet can actually inject the skin with water when we don't want to go down that road. And of course, keep other people, pets, animals, that sort of thing, well out of the way when you're using your pressure washer. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. For more information on this or any of our other products, visit www.hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk. I've been Adrian, and thank you for watching.